You're listening to The Real Fan Review with Hav, Sanj, Al, and B. What's going on, podcasters and YouTubers? This is Hav here, one of your hosts from The Real Fan Review. Today with me, we got my brother, your brother, B. Namaste. Oh, yes. Hit them with a the namaste. I like Wusa, though. Wusa for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, listen, today there's just going to be me and B on the mic, man. We're going to be handling some of the news from this past week. We apologize ahead of time. It's going to probably be a shorter podcast than normal, but there really wasn't much news and stuff that happened. So we're just going to go over the quick bits of news that we did catch this week uh, and some of the big stuff like WandaVision, uh, stuff, stuff going on with Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Mandalorian Season 2. We also have this funny business with Olivia Wilde. Wild and Kevin Feige that we gotta we gotta figure out this mystery here, Brandon. And then we're also <laughs> we're gonna go into having our new She-Hulk. Interesting stuff. So a lot of MCU, <laughs> a lot of regular movie stuff. So let's get right into it there. Brandon, first things first, WandaVision trailer just came out on Sunday night. It just reiterated the fact that I think we're going into the House of M story. Uh the trailer was insane. It, it just it more was. of this this craziness, but you see like Little weird things like Vision looking at Wanda, like weird, like what the hell's going on? There's glitches yeah. in the Matrix. Uh, what's your thoughts on that trailer of Wanda Vision? I mean, to be honest, I thought the trailer was really awesome. I really like the the kind of period piece they're going into, and the whole like this is a lie kind of a thing. You know, uh, I think my most interesting part of it was Paul Bettany. I mean, as yeah. far as we left off, he is still dead. You know. <laughs> so for him to be kind of like a, a coexisting partner in this show, like, you know, he's somewhat getting aware from the trailer that things aren't right, you right. know? So for someone who's not alive, you know, someone who as of, you know, Infinity War was dead, he didn't come back to life, you know, um, I'm interested to see why he's so aware and how this going to, how is this going to play into the show? Yeah, I mean, there's even that scene in the trailer where he's, like, floating in the sky and looking around, and he's looking like things are weird. He goes, flies down, and he's going to, I forgot the actress's name, but she's playing what we think is Agatha from the yeah. comic books. Like, she's one of the villains for Wanda Maximoff, also for Doctor Strange. And he touches her to kind of, like, wake her up or give her a little bit of energy, a little zap there in the brain. Yeah. And she goes, am I dead? And he, you know, and he goes, why would you say that? She goes, because you are. <laughs> yeah so i'm like whoa so there's also other aspects you see the character that's playing um uh from captain marvel i forgot the monica rambeau monica rambeau you see her almost flying out of something where it's either like and into like, like a, a something she's like flying yeah. into some sort of field and it's like she's being kicked out she has the red like outline as if wanda maximoff is using her magic on her so oh. it's like is is it someone has Wanda and Vision and all these people in this made up world, or is it like a House of M thing where Wanda Maximoff, who is the Scarlet Witch, is actually yeah. making this happen? So it's a you don't know really if they're following the yeah, comic book. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, but I also find interesting. B, I don't know if you saw this, but the different, I mean, the different sitcoms it looks like it's playing off of. We have Roseanne, we have Full House. Yeah. Uh, we, all ABC TV shows, by the way. So, <laughs> I mean, are you expecting anything specific? You know, we still haven't seen um, the the character that Cat Dennings plays from Thor in there. We yeah. haven't seen a couple of people that's supposed to be in there. Any thoughts on uh, what you expect to see or what you expect to happen in this? You know, I I, I honestly, from the trailer, I have no idea what's going to happen because you know, just like you said, like. I, I was under the assumption this was going to be something because of her depression. She makes up this world where Vision is alive. They have kids. They have this. They have that. You know, it's a happy life or so it seems, you know, but now we have this possible nightmare character. We have the Agatha character possibly, you know, we, we might have maybe this is some government somewhere has them. You know, this, there's all these different plays now that's really cool because what you thought was cemented in a story, it could be completely different. We could be right. We could be completely wrong. And I'm interested in seeing how this may potentially tie into Doctor Strange 2, like they said it would. 
Right. You Absolutely, know, is he going to show up in this at some point? You know, that's what I'm interested in seeing. Yeah, kid. Okay. What's, your, what's your thoughts on them on that play of, you know, with if you guys know the House of M story, she can, she says this line where she goes, no more mutants. Mm-hmm. How much you want to bet she does no more mutants instead of <laughs> no more mutants, little period, little comma, and dot, dot, dot. More that mutants. Oxford comma. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's how we get our mutants into the, you know, the MCU there. But we'll see how it plays along. Yeah, this is so uh, interesting. Considering, yeah. like, all the bits of news we've gotten lately about, you know, possibly having, um, um forgetting the name, uh, the, the guy who's going to be a Time Lord. Uh, a villain from, a, a villain for the oh, Avengers. Kang the uh, Conqueror. K- Kang the Conqueror. You know, we have Kang the Conqueror, who is a Richard. You know, obviously, from the mutant line of things, you know, we have this no more mutants potentially coming into WandaVision. You know, we're having now all of these different tie-ins of mutants in some way or another. I'm I'm, I'm hoping to see if, if Marvel just drops the bomb like we're getting mutants. I know. I hope so, man. I mean, if you want to get us completely overhyped for and over 2020, that's how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, listen, just to keep it on the MCU news there, one of the big things that dropped this week was we have our She-Hulk now. Uh, She-Hulk is going to be played by, let me see that the character's name is Tatiana Malzany. She's apparently from HBO's Perry Mason, but she also had this big role in Orphan Black where she played numerous different characters of the same person, but different characters and played different characteristics of that same character. And I heard she won Emmys and she's like this well-known actress. <laughs> Firstly, I've never heard of her till this, but Brandon, you're a little bit excited there to get your She-Hulk and know who she finally is. Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. I, I, we're, you know, we're, I think one of the cool things about these shows, you know, on Marvel is we're getting an expansion of the universe in a way we may have not, gotten for a while if it was going to be cinematic you know these television shows are now open up an avenue to have more marvel characters maybe on a season by season basis or maybe just a one-off you know kind of a thing but at least we get to expand the universe in some way some form um and i think this could be cool for the potential for maybe a send-off from mark ruffalo or maybe just a more extension of seeing him mark ruffalo you know we've kind of seen the hulk line almost end in the movies per se we don't necessarily need to see the hulk anymore so right. i think this would be a cool way of having him as a mentor or maybe just a send-off for him i think that would be cool to either see mark ruffalo in any outlet as the hulk it just it seems like his time in the movies has kind of come right i think so too but at the same time which is kind of weird i don't know any of she hulk's like villains you know what i mean like yeah. what's her What's her rogue lineup like? I don't really know any of the She-Hulk rogues, so I'm wondering if it's going to be something interesting. But at the same time, since it's a TV show, it may play more into that whole she's a lawyer, you know, which is a fantastic aspect because there are lawyer shows that I do like to watch to find out how they figure out how they're going to, you know, get the defendant to be found guilty and, you know, the jury and all that stuff like that. Like, I'm personally (laughs) into all that stuff, but I don't know if a lot of people are. But I'm sure with the MCU, they're writing, the people that they get to do this, they're all... They're on their P's and Q's, man. So, you know, they know what they're doing. Uh, And I'm just interested to see what they do. I'm glad they have that. Now I want to see who they cast for Moon Knight and who they cast for Miss Marvel. That's That should be next. And, I mean, uh, the cool thing about She-Hulk is her, I would say her, like, bad guy is uh, someone called Titania. And Titania, you know, obviously is a a female strong villain. So mm-hmm. now you're going to have this female driven show, which could be really awesome. You know, we we've we've had um, was it Hera in, for Thor? Mm-hmm. You know, so now we, we get another a female villain who can rock the screen, potentially come back. You know, I think this could be really cool is to kind of open us up to have more diversity uh, within the MCU. Absolutely, man. And and it's again, it's more stuff to look forward to besides yeah. the movies themselves. Now we'll have these different shows in between to keep us entertained and wanting more and getting the chance to see more. So it's awesome to see that they're actually moving things along as far as the background stuff, you know, the actors, the you know, the people who are writing, because the last two actors they've casted so far have been great. So I'm looking forward to see what's next for them, who they're going to cast and, 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 you know, what role they're going to play also. Agreed. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk to you about, B, we're going to keep it with the MCU. They're making our bread and butter today. <laughs> is 
while we got trailers for WandaVision, while we got the new She-Hulk, conspicuously, there is no Falcon and the Winter Soldier. No news, no nothing. And I'm wondering, Brandon, if your thoughts are the same as mine, that maybe we're not getting anything about Falcon and the Winter Soldiers because it's a little bit more tied into the Black Widow than we thought. Uh-huh. Because that was supposed to be the first show out on Disney Plus. That was supposed to come True. out this month in September, maybe even October, since of the COVID stuff stopping, you know, production of this stuff. But I find it very funny that now we're getting Wanda in December, no news of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Brandon, solve this mystery. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm I'm seeing, you know, they 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 release the uh, the Falcon's new outfit the other day as some kind of a tease you know mm-hmm. um and it was cool it was really cool i, I like the take what they're going on it um but i feel like i agree with you i feel like this is gonna be some kind of tie-in in some way shape or form like maybe yelena is gonna show up in this show at some point right. because if this if the black widow was supposed to introduce yelena and possibly have more of a role for florence Pugh in the future you know I could see why they keep pushing this off and no mention of it anymore is maybe she shows up, you know, right. we, we need our black widow. And if Yelena's going to be our black widow, then maybe she shows up in the show. Yeah. I'm, I'm more on the end of general Ross's role in black widow. Uh, you know, I see general Ross as someone that's maybe doing the Tony the Stark and, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thunderbolts or like the bad guy version of the Avengers. And possibly that's being set up in black widow, which then is going on in in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier because yeah, if you've seen like some of the previews, thing. they have uh, the uh, secret agent or USA agent is one of the characters yeah. on there. There are also this things going on about the Super Soldier program. So I'm not sure if maybe that's what's going on in, in Black Widow that's going to fall into or maybe storylines that thread into the Falcon and the Winter yeah. Soldier. So, I mean, it just sucks because, again, we were looking forward to something from the MCU you know, sooner rather than later. Now we just got to wait till December, which if you think about it, it's only like a couple months away now. And then we'll get all how long we've waited already. So, yeah, exactly, (laughs) man. And then uh, the last bit of news, I promise people, last thing on the MCU, then we'll still talk about Disney. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) The last thing on the MCU is another little mystery, Brandon. I'm going to present you the evidence, Brandon, and I want you to solve this for the fans here. Brandon, Olivia Wilde was talking about her signing with Sony on this new Spider-Verse film, right? So the assumption we all have is she's making some kind of Spider-Woman movie or God knows what, right? But something Spider-Verse. So they were interviewing her and they asked her about it. And she says, you know, I can't say too much because Kevin Feige might be around here somewhere shooting me with a pellet gun if I say too much. And it's like, (laughs) wait a minute. (laughs) But then if you don't know any better, guys, uh, Kevin Feige doesn't work for Sony. So why is Kevin Feige looking at her sideways if she says too much? Brandon, is there something going on here with Sony and the MCU? Do we have collusion? (laughs) I'm saying this right here. Is there some kind of secret deal, man? I think... I think Sony has to understand right now. I I think this is more so because of the times. I think COVID has shown Sony that they they need to pull in more money. Mm-hmm. And they need to do something interesting with their biggest franchise, which is going to be Spider-Man right now. Because Spider-Man was being shared with Marvel for a multi-picture deal. Um, and that deal is expiring with this last one. And at, the, at this point, you have Morbius, which is coming out maybe in the ne- next year and a half. You know, right. and that's interesting, but it didn't get a lot of attention. It got us attention when it showed the vulture and it showed the graffiti of Spider-Man. Exactly. You know, exactly. we have Venom 2. Uh, you know, there will be Carnage, you know, and that didn't get everyone also. So we have Sony, which has a lot of these Spider-Verse based movies with some on the way that aren't really picking up attention because you want to see Spider-Man and you kind of want the Marvel touch, you know? I mean, (laughs) I didn't hate Venom 1, but if it was under the hands of Marvel, I think we could have got a more cohesive movie, you know? 
So you have to have some kind of hesitancy with what's going on with Morbius. Is Are, are people going to be interested? So I think because of COVID, Sony has to see now that we need more money. And we can bring in more money if we get that Marvel touch. And yeah. now, here is where my thoughts are. Exactly like you said, Javier, we are bringing Olivia Wilde as Spider-Woman to the MCU slash Spider-Verse with Sony. And oh, my reasoning for this... Spider-Woman? Oh, hell yes, she is. She is directing and starring as Spider-Woman. <laughs> There is no doubt in my mind the second I heard Olivia Wilde, I said, oh, yeah, she could be Spider-Woman. I said, hell, yeah, she could be Spider-Woman. She will direct and star in this movie. And if you guys remember, uh, if anyone took notice of this, uh, I think maybe two months ago, the pager that Nick Fury used at the end of Infinity War to page in Captain Marvel on the back not only said shield, but it said sword. And if all of you guys know who Sword is, and if you tied in the uh, ending of Far From Home where Nick Fury is in space, probably with Sword, you would know <laughs> that Spider-Woman is a huge part of Sword. And so it's only natural that this is tied in. Oh, Brandon. Wow, you, you they tied in a nice little bow for everyone. Let's <laughs> unwrap that gift a little bit. That's right. <laughs> You know, but I, I, like you said, I think you hit it on the head with the Morbius thing there. You know, they had Spider-Man. Granted, it looked more like the video game Spider-Man or the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man on the wall. But that could be yeah. edited out with computer graphics in a second. That was probably be, edited in, you know. Yeah. You know, that, that definitely could be Tom Holland Spider-Man in a second. But the thing was, was the Vulture. You know, the Vulture was in his jail garb. And he was in jail in Spider-Man in the MCU. So why is the Vulture talking to Morbius? In a Sony movie. So it's already like you can start seeing the wheels turn there for this deal to happen and that this deal is already done. The fact that they've kept it a secret is probably great. But it's, you know, there's a lot of ways they could do this, you know, because Spider-Man technically is still part of Sony's, you know, is, is Sony's merchandise pretty much until they decide not to keep that anymore. Yeah. But I don't know. This is a lot of tie ins, a lot of different things, a lot of clues that are saying, hey, they may be actually working together, which is just a benefit for us story-wise, you know, as far as keeping everything to connected. So, the touch. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, Brandon, man. And then the last bit of news for this week, man, was The Mandalorian for Disney+. Plus. It looks like part two is coming out. See, I'm not part two. Season two of The Mandalorian is <laughs> coming out next month in October. And, you know, the trailer was actually pretty cool. You know, I saw a couple of spots there with little baby Yoda still. Um, I think there was a Jedi that was in the, one of the little alleyways there. So very interesting to see where this is possibly going. I really enjoyed season one. It actually made me like Star Wars just a little bit more. <laughs> and then uh, The Last Skywalker happened, so no, I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you know, Mandalorian was very interesting. The ending was great. The villain was great. The, the What was it? The Black Sword for... Um, not the Black Sword. What was it called? The, 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 Black, the Black Saber? Saber. Oh. Or the Dark Saber. Dark Saber. Just insane. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Brandon, your thoughts on the Mandalorian Season 2 trailer? I thought it was incredible. You know, I I, I like the direction it's going. Um you know, I, I, I say this a lot with what Star Wars is. I, I don't necessarily find that everything needs to be Jedi focused. But, you know, with the inclusion of Baby Yoda, you knew at some point we were going to have some kind of Jedi included yeah. in some way, shape or form. Um, with the inclusion of the Darksaber, for those of you who watch Rebels, you know, that's a big part there. That was also in the Clone Wars once upon a time. Um, so right. the fact that it's shown up in, in live action is awesome. Um, we have possible a possible look at the glimpse of uh, Ahsoka Tano, which is one of Dave Filoni's most favorite characters from Clone Wars. She also <laughs> was older in Rebels, which was a cool comeback for the whole Darksaber thing. So having Ahsoka Tano uh, in, in this show, you know, having that Jedi there is really awesome because um, she was one of those like breakaway characters. You, you know, it was animated, but she was like one of those breakout characters in Clone Wars, where you were so invested in her storyline because it was different, you know, she she built up different themes, and then to have her go into Rebels as an older Jedi, well, she, not, she wasn't a Jedi anymore, but as an older character, 
And then when they came back and finished the Clone Wars and she was a huge part of it, you start to get invested in this character and almost as if she was more important than the Skywalkers in a sense. So now right. the, the fact to have her on a live action show continuing her story, you know, it, it's really cool to see that. I just want to see where it all goes. You know, the mentioning of you have to take him back to his people. Well, for the first time right. ever, we may potentially, they, they'll probably dupe us probably, um, we may find out Yoda's race and see more of his people in a possible planet. You know, it's always been a big secret. It was something that George Lucas never wanted to share is what Yoda is and where he belongs if he's the only one. So the fact that we are possibly getting to see a species of Yoda and or a planet is, right. is we're now taking a lot more mystery to the show. And it's awesome. Yeah, man, absolutely. It's something I'm looking forward to. So just everyone who has Disney Plus, be on the lookout October. We're going to get The Mandalorian, something new to watch, something, something new to talk about. And, uh, I mean, I'm hoping they don't do it episodic again, like once a week, which they're probably still going to do. They're probably going to uh. do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, man, it'll be <laughs> I know, man. Just give me something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So, listen, that's that's the movie news for this past week and for the last couple of days there. Some of the stuff that are big with the MCU. And those are things that everyone looks up and looks for. So, we're glad to talk about it with you guys. Um, so, listen, if there's anything you guys want to talk about, give us uh, a little shout below on the comment section of our YouTube or if you anything anything you want to talk about regarding the MCU, send us an email. The last thing we're going to do today, Brandon, is we're going to talk about those movies that we got to see during this past week. Brandon, I got to watch Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade again Ooh. for the maybe 30th time. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for something to watch on Netflix the other day and I just ended up scrolling past and I said, oh, that's a classic. And you heard the ba ba da ba Ba, ba, da. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Netflix, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> man, and it's just as good the 30th time as the first time, man. This is just a classic Indiana Jones story. Uh, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skulls never existed. Uh, that is <laughs> the... That is... Last Crusade is one of the, is one of the best Indiana Jones. I know a lot of people like the first one. Um, it's Last the, Crusade for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Lost Ark is cool, but this one, man, just the whole, you know, the the Sean Connery as his dad, the 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 banner between the two of them, the solving of the mysteries, the adventure, the jokes. It's just it's just a perfect movie to me, man. It's one of those things I could just watch anytime, and it's just nothing but just fun, you know. So. I personally say you should watch it because it's not. It might not be everybody's flavor now because it's such an older movie now. But for me, it's a need to watch because I'm gonna need to watch it again. <laughs> I'm but gonna need to watch it tomorrow. <laughs> for for like an honesty, like I think you should watch it if you, especially if you're not doing anything during this time. You're looking for a movie to watch. If you haven't seen Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, give it a look. I'm, I guarantee you, you're gonna love it and like it. Brandon, did you get to catch anything during this past week? Yeah, I got to catch two different things. Uh, first thing I saw, both on Netflix, uh, was a, a limited series kind of documentary, uh, right. Challenger, The Final Flight. Uh, ah. For those who aren't aware, you know, the, the Challenger was a, uh, you know, a space kind of... Space shuttle? Know, spaceship? Space shuttle, yeah, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> shuttle. Um, and it, it went up, and it had a, a really diverse group of astronauts in there, including a yeah. teacher, you know, it had a asian american you know we we had a a black man you know take on as an astronaut and that was a monumental thing because of his background you know him being a martial artist him being this being that one of the smartest men most active men um you know we we had a a, a huge crew of people david scobie um you know incredible astronauts and uh, unfortunately the the rocket ship did blow up um not so far from earth you know it, it didn't go so high before they had some issues and the documentary really kind of focuses in on the background of these people you know and the background of nasa and what they were trying to build and what they were trying to go on and then also you know what went wrong and uh, how how they had, how you know nasa attempted to cover it up but also how they wanted to try and move forward from that. And it was a very interesting watch because I, I, for me especially was getting the backgrounds of these people, you know, that, that was a big thing. This was a televised event all, all across the country. Yeah, you I know, remember watching and, it in elementary school. You, I remember you watching it in school, you know. And yeah. 
Yeah. That's that's it's a it's an incredible event. To, it's so sad, you know, that it, this actually happened. You know, it wasn't fake. This wasn't a movie. This was an event that happened and took the lives of, I believe, seven astronauts. Yeah. Um, and to to get the time to, you know, it started off getting giving the time to each of the astronauts, getting to learn a lot about them. Um, one of the my my, my favorite ones was the uh, the teacher. You know, seeing her background and how excited she was about the potential of opening up space for more people you know this was her right. opportunity to to have space available for everyone you know and that's what that was actually nasa's intent which was crazy because you think about it now it's like that's never happened you know we don't have just normal people going into space now we have trained astronauts trained mm -hmm. combat fighters pilots you know those are the people going to the nasa into space you know to the you know whether they're going into um, some satellite, whatever, they, you know, just living up there, you know, any kind of a thing. But to see that the plan was to get, just take not just ordinary people, but people with the motive to inspire others to get more people up there. And that was crazy to see that that was a great plan. And yeah. unfortunately, you know, to see what happened. Um, and, you know, it was a very interesting watch. Uh, and then to take the polar opposite, I watched <laughs> another movie on Netflix, which was very interesting, to say the least, um, <laughs> called My Octopus Teacher. And I'm going to take this from two point of views. <laughs> I think you like anything that has teacher in it. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, I remember just just like you, I saw the trailer and uh, me and my fiance were watching the trailer and we just saw her like, I don't know if we can't not watch that like we, i think we need to watch it because it, it points itself as a man who's learning from this octopus and it's like all right. yeah all right I, I had the exact opposite thought when i saw the trailer i'm like get the fuck out of here <laughs> I was like, so, is, he, is, was, is he gonna make I, love to the octopus well okay so here's like one of the turns we're going to talk about right now so you know thank god it was a it was an hour and maybe 15 minute watch Okay. And it was basically this one man who just apparently at the start of this just lost all like inspiration and motivation until he found this octopus. And he followed this octopus every day for over 300 days. Like he found it and over time began to build trust with the octopus. He watched it in the natural habitat. Even as the octopus got attacked by sharks, it was crazy. All the tension that built up, you're like, they're going to kill this octopus right now. And it was very interesting. Um, and I will say, if you're someone who likes marine biology, it's a really good watch. Um, if you're someone who likes documentaries, I would say reconsider and or maybe think about how you spend your time because it was <laughs> it was like interesting on a understanding bio like marine biology level but right. then it got kind of creepy uh, when it talked about his devotion to the octopus like he he essentially tells you he falls in love with the octopus and wow. like he wanted to bring like he brought his son out to meet the octopus and everything like it was a, it was a very big thing it was like me and the stepmom like i don't know like and and you, you the genuine you know the genuine bit of it is that he was making a relationship with this octopus because he didn't think it could happen a lot of things in the in this documentary a lot of these things about octopuses you don't know you know they're mm -hmm. not in textbooks so he's essentially establishing new behaviors for octopuses by observing them the way he did but wow. from the other point of view you're kind of seeing a very interesting relationship this man has built and if you know, if you understand the life cycle of an octopus, you you know that this documentary is probably going to end, spoiler alert, with the death of this octopus. And his reaction to the death of the octopus can be taken two ways. You know, whether you are inspired by his feelings or it just eternally creeped out. I, I took it one way. I'll let you determine that. My fiance took it another way. Um <laughs> It was very interesting, I will say the least. <laughs> well, I, I will say this. I mean, from the trailer that I saw, it was endearing what he was saying about what the octopus taught him to have sensitivity to outside life, right? We have yeah. this tendency to just only appreciate other human beings on this earth, but not realizing that throwing trash in the ocean kills fishes, kills, you know, Turtles, turtles, I'm sorry, turtles, yes. <laughs> tortoises, <laughs> you know, it kills different animals, also is not helping, you know, and just the reaction to 
bees and things like that. So that's one of the things that I think he was trying to say. That, And he also said because of this relationship with this octopus that he was building, he learned to appreciate human relationships as well. So, yeah. you know. I think that's just a little, somewhat interesting. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to watch it, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> I learned um, that octopus have uh, 2,000 suckers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, Brandon, <laughs> are you recommending the octopus teacher for people? If you got nothing else to do. <laughs> uh, okay, if you have nothing else to do. And how about that first movie, The Challenger docuseries? Would you recommend people I, I to check that out? It. I, I think it's a, a very enlightening piece of, of film, uh, you know, film photography, cinematography, I'm sorry. Um, I, I think it, it, it will educate you as well as inform you um, and also give you a light of history that you may not have known about or may not have fully been aware of. All right, man. Definitely, man. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I know myself. I'm going to eventually watch that Challenger documentary. So I'll let you guys know what I think as well once I get the chance to watch that. Um, so listen, again, go for it, Brandon. Not my octopus teacher. Oh, God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. So listen, guys, again, we apologize. You know, there's not a lot of news, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, when the next time we do meet up, we may be talking about a review for The Devil All the Time. Also, this week, Enola Holmes comes out on Netflix, so we might give that a check as well. Enola Holmes starring, I believe, uh, Superman's in that movie and also the girl from Stranger Things as well. So we might give that a look this week. So listen, guys, if there's anything you guys want us to discuss on the next podcast or any podcast, just shoot us an email at therealfanreview at gmail.com or go to our website, therealfanreview.com, and you can leave a note on there. Or if you want, if you're on watching on YouTube, just leave a comment below. Let us know what you thought about some of the topics we discussed today or if there's something you want us to talk about. And hit that subscribe button and be part of our team here with the real fan review all right guys so listen again short one this week but we'll be back on sunday to record another one for you guys and we'll catch you on the next one so saying goodbye from long island new york we got my brother b i'll be down and myself hob man i thank you guys for watching we appreciate you and we'll catch you on the next one until next time <laughs>